In this section, we're going to review the knee exam, and we're going to demonstrate how to palpate the knee, how to check for anterior cruciate or posterior cruciate ligament damage, collateral ligament damage, and the meniscus. As with most of the musculoskeletal exams that you'll be taught, it's very important to develop a flow to your exam. What we're going to demonstrate today is one way to do the exam. There's definitely other ways to evaluate these structures. I think it's important to find what works in your hands and to use that on a consistent basis. We're going to demonstrate now how to palpate the knee. Uh, initially, you want to just inspect and make sure that there's no uh, swelling. Uh, you can check for crepitus by flexing and extending the knee and palpating over the kneecap to see if there's any uh, wobble or crepitus as you do that. Then you have the patient lie in the supine position. To palpate the knee, I like to flex the knee initially. So bring the knee up, and then you want to anchor the patient's foot. And to do this, you can just set, set down on the side of the foot. Then you want to palpate uh, very specifically the different structures of the knee. I start first palpating the anterior tibial tuberosity. Then I come up and palpate the infrapatellar tendon I move into the joint line, palpating for any meniscal tenderness. Then I palpate the collateral ligament. Then I palpate the distal quadriceps. And then move down into the body of the patella. And then back to the infrapatellar tendon. I'm going to now repeat this maneuver with a close-up shot so that you can see uh, those areas that we're palpating again. Anterior tubule tuberosity, infrapatellar tendon, joint line, collateral ligaments, distal quadriceps, body of the patella, back down to the infrapatellar tendon. Now, this patient has an effusion and we're going to show how you can check for effusion. Uh, first of all, palpate one side and then the other. Uh, the affected side on the left side here is uh, warmer to touch and to try and accentuate the effusion you can press the suprapatellar pouch and you can see the bulge right here of the fluid in the in the knee. And when we relax here there's less of a bulge and you can see the fluid bulge as we come down as opposed to the unaffected knee you press and there's really no bulging here. So this is the maneuver that you'd use to check for effusion. Squeeze and then palpate back and forth, then release and then see if the uh, fluid wave decreases. When palpating the knee, it's important to check for apprehension, which sometimes can be a result of patellofemoral problems, as well as compression tests. So we'll demonstrate those now. To check for apprehension, uh, you basically uh, place your thumb on the medial aspect of the patella and then push the patella laterally. And if there's excessive motion or pain as you do this, uh, then you'd be concerned about a possible patellofemoral problem. Another maneuver to do at this point is to check for a patellar grind. And uh, the way I like to do this is to um, mobilize the patella, then add a compressive force, and then slide the patella back and forth again as I do that. And if there's any chondromalacia uh, or inflammation on the undersurface of the patella, they'll have some discomfort as you do that maneuver. Next, we're going to demonstrate how to evaluate the cruciate ligaments. With the, position st the patient still in this position, uh, you want to look first to see if there's any uh, depression of the anterior tibial tuberosity if it was sagging down and that is actually called the sag sign that would indicate a possible posterior cruciate ligament injury. To check for the anterior cruciate ligament you grasp the lower leg and then just pull forward to check and see if there's any increased range of motion. You follow this with a maneuver to check the posterior cruciate ligament by pushing backwards to see if there's any laxity. You would be comparing one side to the other. 
Again, it's very important to know where you're starting from uh, because if you have a posterior cruciate ligament tear and the knee is sagged back and you move forward, you may think it's an anterior cruciate ligament tear. That's why looking for the sag sign is important. The next maneuver to evaluate uh, the anterior cruciate is called Lachman's maneuver. This is a, a very good uh, exam skill to uh, master because this can be done when the patient has a, an effusion in the knee, whereas the anterior drawer test, which we just demonstrated, is more difficult. To do this, you want to uh, stabilize the distal femur, place your hand on the the lower leg, and you rock forward, checking the uh, for excessive motion of the anterior cruciate ligament. The knee should be flexed uh, about 15 to 20 degrees as you do this maneuver. Another way to do Lachman's maneuver, if you have a big patient or if you find it difficult to use the other technique is to flex the patient's knee, bring your knee underneath, use one hand to stabilize uh, the femur, grasp the lower leg, and then you can pull forward, testing the anterior cruciate ligament. So forward is the anterior cruciate ligament, backward, posterior cruciate ligament. Next we're going to demonstrate how to check uh, the collateral ligaments of the knee. One way to do it is to bring the leg up, basically grasp it uh, with your hip and arm. So essentially I can hold the, the leg up without my hands. I place the hand, my hands on the knee, and then I add a first a valgus stress, and then a varus stress. And I'm looking for any motion. Again, you want to compare one knee to the other. The knee should be slightly flexed as you do this maneuver as well. Another way to evaluate the collateral ligaments is to drop the knee down, and you grasp the lower leg, and then use your other hand as a fulcrum. And then initially, we're going to check the, uh, uh, the lateral collateral ligament, and we're going to be adding a varus stress. We check motion. Again, the, the knee should be flexed 10 to 15 degrees. Then I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to add a valgus stress to check the medial collateral ligament. Again, I'm, I'm looking for the range of motion comparing one side to the other. There are several maneuvers that are helpful in evaluating uh, for a meniscus tear. The first is called McMurray's test. Essentially what you're trying to do is entrap the cartilage, the piece of torn cartilage between the tibial plateau and the femoral condyle. So to do this, you bring the knee up to full flexion, then you move the knee back and forth to try and get that piece of torn cartilage to flop into the joint. Then you lock the foot into internal rotation or external rotation. Uh, and then bring the knee down and you're looking for a, a painful pop uh, uh, that you can palpate uh, with your hand that's examining the knee. Then you bring the knee back up, repeat the maneuver. This time turn the foot to the opposite side from where, from where you just started and then bring the leg down. Again, looking for a painful pop or a click as you do that maneuver. Another way to evaluate uh, for a meniscus tear is to have the patient lie on their stomach. We're gonna check what's called Apley's maneuver. So you bring the knee up so it's 90 degrees flexed, and then you add a compressive force down on the lower leg and then twist. Again, you'd be entrapping the torn meniscus between the femoral condyle and the tibial plateau as you do that. However, this could also uh, cause discomfort if there were a collateral ligament uh, injury um, by the nature of the twisting movement. So to check for that, you basically do the second part of the maneuver, which is to fix the lower leg and then pull up uh, on, on the lower leg and turn. And if it's a meniscus tear that's the source of the problem, you should have pain with the compressive maneuver, but no pain with the distraction maneuver. 
if there's a collateral ligament tear, you'd have pain in both situations because it's the rotation that would be causing the problem.